Anu, V6, or 116, Sol, 26 degrees Leo, Nuna, 22 degrees Leo, Dies Martes, or Tuesday, the hour of Jupiter, August 18, 2020, Era Vulgaris, 1.47 p.m., 1.57 p.m., Central Standard Time. Do what thy wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Sefer Hayasir, or the Book of Jasher, Joser, Sun, Zenith. The sun is at Zenith. Chapter 8 The wise men of Nimrod are Narmer by their divination foretells the evil that Abram Abramulus will do to Nimrod's or Narmer's kingdom and they seek to kill the child. Abram with his mother and nurse are hid in a cave for ten years. Similar to the occurrence of what happened between Uranus or Anush, who is here Narmer or Nimrod and Saturn, who is here represented by Abram. It would again occur with Zeus and Saturn and ultimately with Mars and Zeus. So this is a story of succession and a an archetype of what succession looks like between uh, generations when you have a powerful father figure still ruling and a son ready to rule. Chapter 8 And it was in the night that Avram was born that all the servants of Terah or Terah and all the wise men of Narmer and his conjurers came and ate and drank in the house of Terah. And they rejoiced with him on that night. And when all the wise men and conjurers went out from the house of Terah, They lifted up their eyes toward heaven that night to look at the stars. And they saw, and behold, one very large star came from the east and ran in the heavens. Mercury, Zenith. And he swallowed up the four stars from the four sides of the heavens. And all the wise men of the king and his conjurers were astonished at the sight. And the sages understood this matter, and they knew its import. And they said to each other, This only betokens the child that has been born to Tao Ra this night. Who will grow up and be fruitful and multiply and possess all the earth? He and his children forever, and he and his seed will slay great kings and inherit their lands. And the wise men and conjurers went home that night 
And in the morning all these wise men and conjurers rose up early, and assembled in an appointed house. And they spoke and said to each other, Behold, the sight that we saw last night is hidden from the king. It has not been made known to him. And should this thing get known to the king in the latter days, he will say to us, Why have you concealed this matter from me? And then we shall all suffer death. Therefore, now let us go and tell the king the sight which we saw. And the interpretation thereof, and we shall then remain clear. And they did. And they all went to the king and bowed down to him to the ground. And they said, May the king live. May the king live. We heard that a son was born to Taura, the son of Nahor, the prince of thy host. And we, yesternight, came to his house, and we ate and drank and rejoiced with him that night. And when thy servants went out from the house of Taura to go to our respective homes to abide there for the night, we lifted up our eyes to heaven, and we saw a great star coming from the east. And the same star ran with great speed. And swallowed up four great stars. From the four sides of heaven. And they and thy servants were astonished at the sight which we saw. And were greatly terrified, and we made our judgment upon the sight, and knew by our wisdom the proper interpretation thereof. That this thing applies to the child that is born to Daura, who will grow up and multiply greatly, and become powerful, and kill all the kings of the earth, and inherit all their lands he and his seed forever. And now, our Lord and King, behold, we have truly acquainted thee with what we have seen concerning this child. If it seemeth good to the king to give his father value for this child, we will slay him before he shall grow up and increase in the land, and his evil increase against us that we and our children perish through his evil. And the king heard their words, and they seemed good in his sight. And he sent and called for Taura. And Taura came before the king. And the king said to Tavra, I have been told that a son was yesternight born to thee. And after this manner, was observed in the heavens at his birth. And now therefore give me the child, that we may slay him before his evil springs up against us. And I will give thee for his value thy house full of silver and gold. And Tov Resh, answered the king and said to him, My lord and king, I have heard thy words, and thy servant shall do all that the king desireth. But, my lord and king, I will tell thee what happened to me yesternight, that I may see what advice the king will give his servant, and then I will answer the king upon what he has just spoken. And the king said, Speak. And Dov Resh said to the king, Ayun, I own, 
son of Murad or Murat came to me yesternight saying give unto me the great and beautiful horse that the king gave thee and I will give thee silver and gold and straw and provender for its value and I said to him wait till I see the king concerning thy words and behold whatever the king saith that will I do and now my lord and king behold I have made this thing known to thee and the advice which my king will give unto his servant, that will I follow. And the king heard the words of Daura, and his anger was kindled, and he considered him in light of a fool. And the king answered Daura, and he said to him, Art thou so silly? ignorant or deficient in understanding to do this thing to give thy beautiful horse for silver and gold or even for straw and provender aside truly do i love the love of good to scry the glories of my sustainer until this sun is hidden in the veil of night, King Solomon. Return, verse 24. Art thou so short of silver and gold that thou shouldest do this thing because thou canst not obtain straw and provender to feed thy horse? And what is silver and gold to thee or straw and provender that thou shouldest give away that fine horse which I gave thee, like which there is none to be had on the whole earth. And the king left off speaking. And Thavresh answered the king, saying, Like unto this has the king spoken to his servant, I beseech thee, my lord and king, what is this which thou didst say unto me, saying, Give thy son that we may slay him, and I will give thee silver and gold for his value? What shall I do with silver and gold after the death of my son? Who shall inherit me? Surely. Then at my death the silver and gold will return to my king who gave it. And when the king heard the words of Daura and the parable which he brought concerning the king, it grieved him greatly, and he was vexed at this thing, and his anger burned within him. And Daura saw that the anger of the king was kindled against him, and he answered the king, saying, All that I have is in the king's power. Whatever the king desireth to do to his servant, that let him do. Yea, even my son, he is in the king's power, without value in exchange, he and his two brothers that are older than he. And the king said to Thaura, No, but I will purchase thy younger son for a price. And Thaura answered the king, saying, I beseech thee, my lord and king, to let thy servant speak a word before thee. And let the king hear the word of his servant. And Thaura said, Let my king give me three days time till I consider this matter within myself and consult with my family concerning the words of my king. And he pressed the king greatly to agree to this. And the king hearkened to Thaura, and he did so, and he gave him three days' time. And Thaura went out from the king's presence, and he came home to his family and spoke to them all the words of the king, and the people were greatly afraid. And it was in the third day that the king sent to Thaura, saying, Send me thy boy for a price as I spoke to thee. And shouldest thou not do this, I will send and slay all thou hast in thy house. 
so that thou shalt not even have a dog remaining. And Thaurah hastened, as the thing was urgent from the king, and he took a child from one of his servants, which his handmaid had borne to him that day. And Thaurah brought the child to the king and received value for him. And the Lord was with Thaurah in this moment, that Narmer, Nimrod, might not cause Avram's death. And the king took the child from Thaurah, and with all his might dashed his head to the ground, for he thought it had been Avram. And this was concealed from him from that day, and it was forgotten by the king, and it was the will of providence not to suffer Abram's death. And Terah took Abram his son secretly, together with his mother and nurse, and he concealed them in a cave, and he brought them their provisions monthly. And the Lord was with Abram in the cave, and he grew up. And Abram was in the cave ten years. And the king and his princes, soothsayers and sages, thought that the king had killed Abram.